Do you think your children watching pornography? Ah? Let's say in the primary school. That time was 1987. Pornography, not convenient to have it. Videotape, right? In the school, we already exchanged. After school, we meet together in someone's house and watch pornography together. That was 35 years back, you know. Today, with all these devices, what do you think? Love one another as I have loved you. By loving one another, everyone will know that you are my disciples. People get to know Jesus is not by how much you pray, how you fast, all these things, and how often you come to church even. I'm not saying that coming to church is not important. But to be able to let people see Jesus, see God, encounter Jesus is through our love for one another. And this is the only commandment that Jesus gave to his disciples. In the Old Testament, we have 10 commandments. But in the New Testament, Jesus only said this, this is my commandment, love one another. Therefore, how important it is. And he said this before he was crucified. Just right before, when he was having the last supper with the disciples, he said this. So my brothers and sisters, today the readings help us to see one very important message, which is faith transmissions. How to transmit our faith to others. In the first reading, we can see how the early Christians, Paul, Barnabas, the new disciples, the new pagan believers, why they come to know God and why they believe in Christianity, why they believe Jesus and how they encountered Christ. This is because the early Christian community, they love one another. They really give them the spirit of the gospel to witness Christ in their life through their speech and their actions. Through loving one another, people will know we are Christian. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 42 onward, you can see a new community life. They come together to share everything together and they worship together, they work together and God make those who are chosen to join them. And they grow, the community grow. It's a faith transmission. We need to witness our faith through how we love one another. Each one of us, we have to ask ourselves, how we witness our faith, how we witness the gospel, the good news, how we witness Jesus in our life. Even as a priest, I have to constantly asking myself, am I in the right track? We believe in Jesus. Our faith is not far from the sky, you know, right? We may have a desire to know more. We may have the desire to search for spiritual life and that is the starting point. But we need to see, we need to see what is Christian faith, true Christian. Many young people, after their confirmation, we are losing them. Many parents do not know their role as Christian parents. We do not witness our faith to our young one. We do not talk, we do not discuss about our faith. Discuss our faith, it doesn't mean that you have to teach them the teaching of the church, all these things. Witnessing faith is true life. How the gospel changed my life, how the gospel influenced my life, and who Jesus is in my life. And that is very important. Today, Jesus is no longer exists physically, but He exists spiritually in our life, among us. We are the little Jesus, we are the little Christ. All of us receive the faith from someone. Some of you receive the faith from your parents, many of you, and some receive our faith from our catechists, our Sunday school teachers, and some receive the faith from priests, sisters. I'm a convert. I receive the faith from my friends. So we receive our faith from someone. Must be someone sharing and witnessing Christ. Therefore, you really encounter Christ. When I say receive the faith, doesn't mean that the intellectual level. 
Many people until now, you may not yet encounter the person of Jesus. The faith that you're having is just head level. Many people in our life witness Christ to us. Therefore, we encounter the love of God. All of us receive good things from our home. Home is important. The first home is our family, our parents. And parents give best things for their children. Generally, we give the best for our children. We give the best milk powder. We give the best that what we think. We give the best environment. We give the best education for our children as well, right? Do you give your best that we believe? Or first of all, do you believe that is the best or not? Jesus. It seems like many parents not able to convince that the faith is important, you know? Because we seem like put more priority on other things for our child and then the faith don't know where to put, you know? <laughs> First priority, second priority, third priority. Maybe the faith is number 10 or number 11, you know? Sometimes parents say they have tuition. Tuition more important than the faith. Learning music more important than the faith. So what the parents choose, your choice, your decision, you tell your children how important are these things. And that is witnessing. Whatever you say, then after that you tell your children God is so important, uh, all bluff. <laughs> they will say all bluff because our choices didn't show God is important. The way we choose things, the way we decide, the value that we give, it seems like God is not important. And this will contribute to how we transmit our faith to our children from young. From one year old, they will receive all these messages. Home is very important. Home is where we nurture our physical, our emotion, our intellect, our spiritual as well. We humans have three parts, spirit, soul and body. We put so much priority on our body, our physical level. Therefore, we give a lot of time and effort for that. We give a lot of time and effort for our intellect also. Therefore, we send our children to schools, to best tuitions, to whatever things, building up their intellectual ability. But how much we spend our energy, time and effort for our spiritual part? Not enough, I tell you. Really not enough. Just now I said home is very important. Home is to nurture our whole being, spirit, soul and body. The church know very well on that. Therefore, seminary formation, you know, eight years, right? Some people ask why eight years so long? You go and study a doctorate, how many years? Six years can count him, right? Why to become a priest need eight years? We are not just study only. Because the church knows very well that this formation is not just for here. It's the whole being, spirit, soul and body. That's why in the pastoral double worry by John Paul II, he came out these documents, status that there are four areas in the seminary formation. And these four areas formation, I would say same, apply to every homes, every faith formation. Family, faith formation, church community also is a faith formation, home for our young one, even the old one. So the seminary formation, which four areas? First is spiritual formation. The prayer that we do, you know, in the seminary, a lot of prayer we need to do. Every day we pray, we participate in Mass, and we have a lot of spiritual exercises. That's spiritual formation. The second one is pastoral formation. Form us, train us to learn how to pastor to people. Because as a priest, we need to pastor to people. How to love one another. Therefore, we live in a community to learn to love one another. And then the third one is human formation means to cultivate ourselves. You know, all of us come from different backgrounds. We got a lot of issues, you know. We are not perfect. But as much as possible, we need to cultivate ourselves, become a better person, to know ourselves more, and how to handle our anger, how to handle our weakness. So that is a human formation. It's very important. And the last one is intellectual formation, which is study. And these four things I see is I reflect on that actually is very, very simple only. Very simple only. The first one, spiritual formation, is learn how to love God. The second one, pastoral formation, is learn how to love your neighbor. The third one, human formation, is learn how to love yourself. And then 
the intellectual formation or the information is the law of love. Love God, love your neighbor, love yourself. And you need the law of love to tie these three things together. Can you see that it's same important in our family formation for our children as well. Parents, you need to allow your children to love God, love the neighbor, and love themselves. And you need to give them the law of love. Okay? Why I tell you all these things? Today, the children have been receiving a lot of information from the world. Sometimes our parents are still very naive and ignorant. They think that their children is so good. They think their children have no issues, no problems. I can tell you, they don't tell you only. Please hear confession, you know. We know what is happening. I want to tell you, there is very high rate, high percentage that our young people have a thought of commit suicide. And some even try to do it. The past few years, I have two cases. Young people commit suicide. And when the things happen, the parents really didn't have any idea at all what is happening. And they did not know why their children commit suicide. They can't see any symptom, any sign. I don't know whether it's our parents not able to really relate or connect to their children. I can tell you, your children have a lot of things never tell you. And sometimes we think that we know better than them, right? Perhaps we do not have a close relationship. Perhaps the trust is not there. How much trust and how close are your children with you? We need to ask ourselves. I always said, young people after 12 years old, more or less uh, after 12, parents shouldn't teach them from top down. When infant, we are cover our children. It's like a cell, you know? Our children is totally covered by us. But when they come to teenage, the cell inside means our children is a time they are leaving the mother's cell. They are coming out. And many of our parents still holding them inside. Therefore, a lot of problems. By nature, each one of us should separate it from our parents. Jesus said, you must leave your parents, your father and mother, going with your wife, right? You must leave. Parents must let go. But during the teenager's time, the cell still link, the parents still need to take care of them. Therefore, you cannot let go totally so that you can, like playing the kite, you got a string, you still can pull back because they are not mature enough to be independent. But you must give them a lot of space to develop the self. Otherwise, they will lose the self. They will never grow and they may die, you know, spiritually, emotionally, all these problems will come. So, because of that, therefore the trust is not there. When your children come to the teenager's age, you must trust them. You must allow them to do something they want to try. They are at the stage of experiential. Before 12, whatever you say, they will receive. But after 12, whatever you say, they want to prove and they want to experience it. So, would your children have a chance to experiment, to experience and to exercise? Another thing is, share your ups and downs to your children as well. Not the young, young one, I'm talking about the teenagers. Allow them to share your pain. Allow them to share your sorrow. No need to be strong before your children. Learn how to be vulnerable in front of your children. Allow them to participate in your family matter. Allow them to discuss and find ways and pray together for all the problems that you face. Financial, relationship, allow your children to tell you what is going wrong because parents always think that we are the hero for our children. We know everything, we know better than them and that will not help them really. When you can be vulnerable before them, you will gain their trust, you will gain their respect you will gain them so that they will open to you. So this is what Jesus means, love one another. Love one another is not just give, not just give, also need to receive. In the family, love one another doesn't mean that the parents only give, but the parents also need to learn how to receive from the children and how to be open to the children. True love, no defensive, no need to wear masks before your children also. And this is what we call community. And by doing that, people will recognize that we are the 
disciple of Christ. By doing that, people will know you are Christian family. Today, we allow our children to use all the devices. I'm not saying that you must stop them. I don't know how so. But I see young children from three years old onward. My brother's son, uh, just one year plus only, my brother already gave him rolling the device. When you start decided to give your children these things, this is a door to the world. And you have to prepare what is happening. And you need to prepare yourself for this. Don't be so naive. Your children may know a lot of things and they may already process a lot of things and they got a lot of questions but nowhere and nobody to ask. And they are not ready to face the world. Not only sexuality, politics, moral, a lot of other things. And we sometimes are not ready to accompany or journey with our children in all these areas. Not able to manage relationship, emotion, all this. It is not that easy, I know, yes, it's not easy. Do you think your children watching pornography, ah? let's say in the primary school? Sometimes our catechists tell me that some of our parents, they say the parents still not able to accept that in catechism class talk about sexuality or this topic they're against. I don't know why. Do you believe that your children during primary school already go into all these things? I can tell you, my time when I was in removed, I'm from Chinese school, therefore I got Baalehan removed. 13 years old. That was my first time really encounter pornography. I was studying in famous school, good school. Don't think that if your children is study in a good school, they will get rid of all these things. My time when I was 13 years old, that time was 1987. Pornography, not convenient to have it. Videotape, right? In the school, we already exchanged. After school, we meet together in someone's house and watch pornography together. That was 35 years back, you know. Today, with all these devices, what do you think? How young your children get in touch with all these things? And how can they handle this? How to handle all this? And parents, do you know how to handle all these things or not? Many, many other things. Then how? Then how? Right? How? What I want to say is, what is the solution? You are Christian. <laughs> you are a follower of Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Am I learning or following Christ enough? Am I really believe in the Word of God that really can give life? We should ask ourselves, am I living the Gospel? Am I practicing my faith? Or I also following what the world tells us. Therefore, I also got a lot of struggle as parents. How to take care of my children? I also cannot take care of myself. Today, family, a lot of problems. Because we do not submit ourselves to the Word of God and we do not really believe the Word of God. Jesus said, I tell you solemnly, solemnly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No matter how terrible the world to be, no matter what storm out there, but we have Jesus. If you have Jesus on your boat, no storm can shake you down. Nothing. Because Jesus is our Lord and Saviour. So my brothers and sisters, awake. We must really, really awake. If we do not look for Jesus as solution, you will let the world eat you out. You will let the devil eat you out. We need to put God in our first priority. We need to put the Word of God as our first priority. No other things. Not tuition, not study, not school homework, not everything. Today, I can become a priest because community and because of the Word of God. Only God can save us. Don't think that all this study, all these things, you prepare them for the world, for working, for money, for physical, but you will lose their soul and spirit. Peter said, Lord, you have the eternal word to whom I shall go. And Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. Amen.